In the next series of lectures, I'm going to be discussing how to deal with time frequency power results, um, and in particular, how to interpret them and how to uh, normalize them to be able to compare across frequencies. Um, and so the question is, how do we get from a plot that looks like this to something that looks a bit more like this? Believe it or not, these actually come from exactly the same data, um, exactly the same analyses, the same wavelets and everything. The only difference is that this plot is uh, baseline normalized and this plot is not. And you can see, so this is showing raw power and this is decibel transformed power. Um, you can see, so, you know, there's, there's a few features in these plots that are roughly comparable between the two um, plots with and without normalization. But there are a lot of other dynamics that are technically present in this plot, uh, but just very difficult to see without doing the normalization. So uh, why do we need this normalization and how do we, uh, how do we get there? Uh, the main reason why we need this normalization is because of something called uh, the power law, power law scaling. This is a, a little bit confusing because there's, you know, we have the power law and then we have time frequency power, and those things aren't entirely related to each other, um, although I guess they are a bit related. Uh, but the idea of the power law is that the, the power, the amplitude of, um, of uh, frequency band specific activity generally decreases with increasing frequency. So here you see on these two plots, I'm sorry, I don't have the references for these anymore. I found them on the internet uh, many years ago. Uh, that uh, with increasing frequency, there is decreasing power. And this is very characteristic. We'll also see this in sample data uh, in a few minutes. And so this causes some uh, difficulties and I'll highlight uh, five um, specific problems that this causes. But you can already see one problem is if you want to compare activity across frequency bands, if you want to compare theta to, you know, uh, uh, beta activity, you're generally always going to find higher um, theta activity than beta activity, not necessarily because there is more sort of task related or cognition related theta, but just because of this, uh, this um, power law scaling. This um, function generally approaches a shape of uh, 1 over f, and it's actually 1 over f to the c. That's where the power law scaling comes from. That's where the term power law comes from. Um, unfortunately, so this, you know, you think that this approximates a linear scale. So maybe initially your idea is, well, we just take the log of power and that should linearize it. That should, uh, that should help us interpret the data. But unfortunately, that doesn't really work either. So here you see a power spectrum, but on a linear scale and on a logarithmic scale. And it, there's, I guess, maybe a little bit more uh, in, so it's a little bit more interpretable. You see this, this uh, bump here around six hertz or shoulder, I should say, is maybe a little bit more prominent here. But we haven't gotten rid of this issue of, um, of, uh, of getting rid of this one of ref scaling. Um, so we can switch to MATLAB quickly just to have a look. This is a very short script. Uh, it's not super interesting, um, but it just allows you to see this 1 over F scaling uh, for any given channel. So here it's selected TP8, so you can change this to other channels. This shows you the power spectrum from each individual trial, and then the thick black line is all trials averaged together. And here, if you want to run these commented lines, um, then you'll see that transforming to a log scale or even a log log scale really doesn't help much at all. You still have this very prominent um, decrease in power with increasing frequency. And to be clear, this is not necessarily um, an artifact per se. You know, there is a, a small but quite interesting literature on these um, so-called scale-free or fractal uh, dynamics. And this, this general shape of the of the uh, result of the power spectrum uh, might be a or I guess is likely to be a meaningful signature of the organization of of, of, of the brain and of uh, the functional properties of the brain but still this causes uh, quite a number of, of limitations and problems um, changing the color scaling of the time frequency plot is also not uh, really an option uh, you can 
you know, you can change the color scaling to be optimal for one frequency, but then it's basically going to be suboptimal for all other frequencies. So we need some kind of a um, solution to, um, to be able to uh, get rid of this 1 over f um, scaling frequency while still being able to interpret the time frequency power results related to the cognitive tasks that you are using. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to introduce you to two of these normalization factors. One is decibel change and the other is uh, percent change. Um, but I wanted to end this video, I think end, yes, yeah. uh, end this video with five points on um, a justification for why normalization, baseline normalization is very useful. The first point is that it's very difficult to, to visualize power simultaneously at multiple frequency bands. This you could see here, and I also showed it here. So it's very difficult to visually compare the, uh, the time frequency power results at 5 hertz versus 35 hertz. Um, for exactly the same reason, it's also very difficult to make quantitative comparisons of power across frequency bands. So if you want to know, is there more power in theta versus beta? Yeah, that's, uh, that's very difficult to determine without normalizing the data somehow. Um, point three is that it's very difficult to aggregate effects across subjects um, with raw power values. And this is because raw power values, uh, like raw microscope, uh, mi microscale, uh, microvolt, sorry, values, uh, um, can be wildly different across subjects and across different uh, equipment for, for reasons that have nothing to do with the brain. So if you have different companies, different caps, different uh, referencing um, schemes, all of these things and, you know, differences in, uh, in skull thickness and the shape of the, of the brain, the quality of the preparation of the electrodes, all of these things will influence the uh, microvolt values and therefore the raw power values. But these are all differences across um, across the skull, across uh, 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 subjects, across um, uh, different groups, and across experiments that have nothing to do with the brain whatsoever. These are just kind of artifacts of, of measurement uh, and post-processing um, options. What you really want is to be able to um, compare effects across subjects, across frequencies, across different, um, uh, different types of equipment, different um, uh, schemes for uh, referencing the, for spatial referencing of the data that are um, totally independent of these, you know, sort of uninteresting factors. And so baseline normalization is one method to um, allow you to safely and validly aggregate uh, um, numerical values across uh, different subjects. Um, point four is that um, task related changes in power can be difficult to disentangle from background activity. This is particularly the case if the um, if there is a lot of background activity, the background activity is very very strong, whereas the task related changes are relatively small. This often happens if you have a you know a subtle manipulation in your experiment. It's not that you're comparing you know living being alive versus being dead. That's obviously a big change, um, but you know some very subtle change in uh, in stimulus properties, for example. Okay, um, and finally, point five is more of a statistical point. Raw power values are inherently non-normally distributed. Uh, they cannot be negative, and they tend to be very strongly positively skewed. Um, and so if you would like to perform uh, parametric statistics like ANOVAs or regressions or um, factor analyses, then raw power values can cause a lot of headaches in your statistical procedures. Um, and in contrast, uh, baseline normalized uh, power values, decibel transformed or percent change transformed values, um, tend to be normally distributed, and they are uh, normally distributed under the null hypothesis. Um, so these are some justifications for why you would want to do normalization. In the next video, I'll introduce you to the mechanics of um, two specific normalizations, decibel and percent change.